Hello, I'm Emma Hammett, the founder and CEO of First Aid for Life and onlinefirstaid.com. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about anaphylaxis and acute allergic reaction. What to do, how to recognise that someone might be having an acute allergic reaction and how to help. It's thought that nearly um, a quarter of all children in Europe have some form of an allergic um, predisposition. Uh, it may be that that's asthma or eczema or some other type of allergic reaction and it may be for some of them that it's quite a serious um, allergic reaction that can, for, um, can become an anaphylactic um, reaction. Uh, Life-threatening anaphylaxis is considerably rarer. But even so, it's estimated that nearly two-thirds of um, schools have at least one child who could be at risk of an acute anaphylactic reaction. So it's not that uncommon. A lot of people who have been prescribed EpiPens or equivalent um, may think that they are in danger of having a, a major allergic or anaphylactic reaction at any point. Actually, an awful lot of them won't be directly at risk, but you don't know, which is why they've got these just in case. They will have been prescribed them because they have had an allergic reaction in the past and that it is possible that that allergic reaction could become life-threatening. And we'll get on to um, EpiPens and and a pens that aren't around at the moment anymore, um, emirates and, um, and, and the likes. So we'll get, we'll get on to, and Jext, of course. So we'll get on to these and how these work a little bit later. Okay, so just to go through very quickly, what is an allergic reaction? Well, an allergic reaction occurs when the immune system reacts inappropriately to the presence of a substance it wrongly perceives as a threat. So you're not directly reacting to nuts, for example. So the body doesn't directly react to the nuts. What happens is that the body senses that there are nuts around, for example, if nuts are what you're allergic to, and the body produces histamine and various other bits and pieces. It's quite a complex process, but we won't, don't need to go into that. So the body produces histamine. And histamine dilates the blood vessels and it causes them to leak and it causes the airways to tighten, rashes to occur, um, the casualty can collapse, and it causes all those things to happen. Now histamine on its own is, is actually okay. Um, we all have very small amounts of histamine in our bodies anyway, naturally. It helps, um, it helps the body know when you like to wake up, when you like to go to sleep. It, it controls those diurnal rhythms. It's, it's helpful in various other things as well, but in minute, minuscule quantities. When we start producing larger amounts of histamine, that's when we start getting the sort of common allergic reaction type things like hay fever type um, reactions where you might have itchy eyes, um, get a bit congested, um, all those sort of common symptoms. And if um, the body really doesn't like whatever it's exposed to, it can produce a lot of histamine and a lot of histamine can lead to a life-threatening reaction. Now, if the body's reacting to the histamine, then antihistamines can help. So the likes of Pyroton and Zyrtec and all the other branded antihistamines that exist. Um, Claritin is another one. There's lots of them. Um, they can be very helpful. So in controlling mild allergic reaction, damping down the histamine can mean that you can control your allergic symptoms. The issue with his antihistamines with a, a life-threatening reaction is they take about 15 minutes to, to, to work and you may not have that amount of time if someone's having an, an acute anaphylactic reaction, a life-threatening. So antihistamines are very useful to control 
um, symptoms when it isn't life-threatening, but when it is life-threatening, it is adrenaline that will work much quicker. Okay, so when you're having an acute anaphylactic reaction, one of the potentially life-threatening ones, what happens is that the, the blood vessels, the little capillaries um, in your skin and around, dilate and they leak, and they leak fluid. And the fluid that they leak leads to um, congestion in the lungs as well. It can make it harder to breathe. It can constrict your airway, again, making it harder to breathe, and it can cause swelling all over. The leakage as well can drop your blood pressure. So not only is your drop, blood pressure dropping because of that, it's also dropping because your blood is in your skin rather than in the central part of your system. So your blood pressure drops. If your blood pressure drops, um, it can make you um, very ill indeed. So it is shock, which is why it is anaphylactic shock. So the positioning that you put someone in when they're having an anaphylactic reaction can be very helpful. First of all, look at them and see, stay calm, and look at them and see what they are suffering from. Um, an acute anaphylactic reaction can be particularly serious if you have someone who is asthmatic. If someone is asthmatic when they have an acute allergic reaction, it very often sits on their lungs and their normal inhaler will not be relieving it. Their reliever inhaler will not relieve the symptoms and they will get shorter and shorter of breath. And they will need medical help very quickly. So if they are short of breath, Stay calm, help them to stay calm, because the calmer you are, the calmer they will be. If they are having difficulty breathing and you're panicking around them, then it will make things tighter. So help them to take their reliever inhaler if they are asthmatic. If they have been prescribed an EpiPen and the reliever inhaler has not worked, then you would be, you would be helping them to administer their own EpiPen and getting the emergency services on the way. Now the positioning for someone who's having trouble breathing is to make sure that they are in a position where they can most easily breathe, it makes sense. So an upright position if someone is short of breath. However, if you have someone who is having an acute anaphylactic reaction and um, they are not short of breath or struggling to breathe, but their blood pressure has plummeted, so they're feeling really dizzy, they're feeling horrendous, um, they're flushed, um, they've got hives on their, um, on their skin, uh, maybe their face is very swollen as well. You can see that, or you suspect, that they're having an allergic reaction. You should lie them down and raise their legs to help the blood to get more easily to their heart and their brain okay so you would be lying them down and raising their legs and you wouldn't be getting them up until the emergency services arrive if they have been prescribed an epipen an emeraid or a jext um, an adrenaline auto injector then you would be helping them to give it to themselves or give it to them yourself if um, if that is the most appropriate thing to do okay so or if they ask you to help them so they will need the adrenaline what adrenaline does is it constricts the blood vessels and it dilates the airways again so it makes it much easier for them to be able to breathe and and carry on um, okay so in order to give um, an EpiPen, um, here is a real one, so you would take it out of its container, you would take off the cap, shake it, hold it in your dominant hand and put it in the upper outer part of the thigh. Okay, so here is um, a demonstrator, you hold it in your dominant hand, with the other hand you take off the cap, you shake it, you put it in, I don't know if I can show you on this, 
you put it in the upper outer part of the thigh and you put it in hard and you hold it. Hold it nice and firmly for about 10 seconds, then you take it out and you give it a rub. Now they should start feel, to feel better um, fairly soon. If they don't start to feel better or they feel worse, um, you can give another one of these at five minutes. If you are giving an adrenaline auto injector or if you suspect somebody has um, is suffering from acute anaphylactic reaction, you need to phone an ambulance straight away. So give the um, auto injector if they have one and get an ambulance on the way. If they haven't got an auto injector, put them into an appropriate position. So upright, um, sitting probably lazy W position with their knees up a little bit. If they are able to breathe like that, if they are having breathing problems or lie them down and raise their legs if they are not having breathing problems. Phone an ambulance and say acute anaphylactic shock and they will get there as quickly as they possibly can. So that is an EpiPen, this is an Emeraid and this is a Jext. For a child, they come in a 0.15 milligram um, uh, dosage. For an adult, they come in 0.3. And for the Emeraid, there is also a 0.5. And an Emeraid also has a slightly longer needle, which is better if you've got a slightly bigger um, casualty. But they will have been prescribed whatever adrenaline auto injector um, they have. Um, it's not for you helping with first aid to rummage in your bag and offer someone else's. I really hope that's been useful. There are loads of resources on my website. We've written a great article for the British Journal of School Nursing that's available on in the press, um, part of my site. And there are lots of other articles as well on firstaidforlife.org.uk and lots of other online resources on onlinefirstaid.com. Thank you for listening and um, have a good day.